It is the most flight of anything online. It starts in all the chess clubs in the world to children and adults in their first year. And yet, we see the same mistakes over and over again, which are too well punished. Whereas it is enough to know the few classic themes I'm going to show you to win many easy and brilliant victories. Let's get started. So after e4, e5, knight f3, knight c6, bishop c4 and bishop c5, uh, after these very simple and normal developing moves, we have reached the position which characterizes the Italian opening. Name after the Italian masters who played, who played it uh, already back in the 16th and 17th century, so a very ancient opening. And after this three knight f6, we will not look at the most popular move nowadays at the highest level, which is pawn to c3, with the intention of developing the knight to d2, but instead at the maybe more normal move, uh, knight to c3, developing the knight to what seems its best square, uh, the central one, uh, on c3. And after d6, the best move for white is to pin the knight on f6 to the queen on d8 with this move, bishop g5. And already black has to be precise, and the best move for them is to question the bishop's intentions with h6. But it's not the topic of today, and we'll look instead at a very uh, common and instructive mistake, which is castling. Why are you wondering? Why uh, this move can be a mistake? Because the king looks very safe here, with the three pawns and the seventh rank defending him. The problem for black is that we are going to destroy this pawn, this pawn structure. We won't take uh, on the next move here, because black would not uh, recapture with the pawn, but obviously with the queen. And in this position, black might be already better with the bishop pair for nothing. So, here white has a very good move. It's not too difficult and you have probably already seen it before. It's to play knight d5, putting more pressure to the poor knight on f6, which is pinned. So, black can't take the knight, obviously, because then the queen will be lost. And unfortunately for them, black cannot play a move like bishop e7, uh, which would have uh, broken the pin. Uh, nor can they uh, defend the knight with another piece, like for instance if the knight on c6 was still on b8, they could play knight to d7, defending the knight on f6. But here, we are already sure that on the next move, if we want, uh, we are going to be able to take the knight on f6 with either our knight or our bishop, and black would be forced to recapture with the pawn, destroying their pawn structure and doing so, um, weakening their king. So, okay, the best move for black here would be to play bishop e6 to, in order to exchange uh, some of the um, attacking power of white. But it's not the most instructive move, so we are first going to look at bishop g4, uh, pinning also the knight on f3. So um, the position is kind of symmetrical, but there is a huge difference. Uh, the first one had actually two main differences. First is white being uh, white as an extra move, an extra tempo, which is good uh, in such positions. And the other is even more important, it's that black has, ca black has castled and white haven't. So if even if black manages to destroy uh, our pawn structure on the king side, we won't, we won't care because our king will be safe on the queen side after a long castle 
and we could even use the G file uh, to attack Black's king. So this is why white is totally winning here. But what is the best move for them? Two moves looks very convincing. Either knight takes f6 or bishop takes f6. But uh, as we are going to see, neither of them is the best move. But to understand the position, we are going to look at both of them first. And okay, we we'll begin with knight takes f6 uh, check, forcing g7 takes. And here the best move is the obvious bishop x6. So one pawn is missing, or one pawn has moved, uh, so one square has been weakened. And we already enter this square, and uh, we start the attack. Uh, first to the rook on uh, f8, which has to move. And uh, here, okay, we can try, for instance, h3. A, a good move, probably the best move in the position. And black has to be very precise not to lose in a couple of moves already. For instance, bishop h5 will be met by g4, and after bishop g6, h4. And as we can see, the poor bishop cannot move at all. Like every, he has only two squares, and both of them are uh, protected by white. And uh, on the next move, we'll be able to play h5 and win the bishop. And not only win the bishop, but also open the h5 for the rook. Uh, to attack the, the king even more, so yeah, black can just resign in this position. So what can they do? They can't take, uh, because then queen takes f3, and as we can see, the queen uh, enters the game, and the mating, mating attack, and yeah, you are going to, um, to mate uh, on g7 in a few moves. So what can they do? Uh, unfortunately for white, black has uh, only one good move, but they do have one. It's bishop e6, retreating the, uh, the bishop, and also, yeah, uh, intending to exchange uh, one of white uh, attackers. And here, yeah, we can try like knight to h4. Uh, with the idea of freeing the queen, for instance, now bishop c4 is met by checkmate in two moves. But black can play king to h8, um, putting the the king, um, how to say, uh, using the h7 pawn to protect the king and also uh, putting the king away from the g file and uh, intending work to g8 to um, to use the g file actually against white maybe so here we have to stop the variation and and evaluate the position and okay the material is equal but obviously one king is much safer than uh, the others and so white White's king is obviously much much safer and it will be even more safe uh, after Long Castle and maybe even king to b1 to be protected by these three pawns. Whereas black's king will never be safe. Um, so yeah, white is much better but they are not winning or at least not uh, crushing yet. So maybe Maybe bishop takes f6 then, and so okay, black has to uh, to recapture with the pawn once again. And here to uh, to find the best move, uh, you have to to ask yourself this question: If you could put uh, white queen anywhere on any free square of the chessboard, where would you put it, her? So one square is better than all the others. It's h6, where the queen would pressure h7, but also f6. So let's try queen to d2, with the intention of uh, putting the queen to h6 on the next move. For instance, if, if black 
displays uh, night to d4 we could take first and maybe it will be even more precise but we the position is so winning that we don't have to be precise and, and we can play safely queen to h6 for instance knight takes it to check king d2 or d1 who cares knight takes a1 and we take on f6 giving a check if the king moves then we give this checkmate so black has to give up the queen and we can take it and yeah already a queen up we are going to win the knight on a1 and this check is also deadly and yeah the attack is crushing too so black can resign so it looks good but after queen to d2 black has only one good move but they do have one good move it's to play king to g7 uh, the king has to move forward to prevent the queen from uh, entering uh, its position and yeah once again the evaluation of the position is similar to the previous one white is much better because yeah material is equal and everything else is better for white the king safety king safety first as always but also the pawn structure so yeah white is much better probably winning in the long term but not in the short term and we are definitely not crushing i mean i will lose I would lose this game f against the computer with white for sure. And so what is white's best move here if it's not to take uh, with the knight nor with the bishop? The best move, it's almost never played online. It's it's crazy because it's a very simple position but um, on Leech chess it's only the fifth most popular move and it's played in only uh i don't know where do i see <laughs> uh in only two percent two percent of the game so yeah as you have seen it's to play queen to d2 what's the idea it's very simple we are going to take with the bishop and after g7 takes back we are going to play queen h6 and black um doesn't have the time to play king to g7 so there's basically basically nothing they can do for instance knight to g4 once again we could take first but who cares we take on f6 g7 takes and queen to h6 and yeah they can resign you remember we just saw this position and conclude that white is totally winning so this was the first uh, topic and the first uh, topic on the matter how to destroy uh, your opponent's uh, castle in the Italian opening and it was white pinning the, the knight on f6 and black castling so now we are going to take a look at the opposite after e4 e5 so as you can see we we look on the blacks um on black's perspective knight c6 bishop c4 bishop c5 d3 knight to f6 knight to c3 d6 and here castle for white which is already a dubious move it's not that bad i mean for the computer uh, it's equal but in human terms white has already uh, to play very precisely not to uh, to lose the game and so we play bishop g4 uh, pinning the knight and okay white could play uh, a move like bishop to e3 which is quite popular you know when they realize that you want to play knight to d4 uh, they start thinking thinking sorry for my bad french accent and they find bishop is free with the uh, they did to take the knight but here okay we don't care we we take back with the bishop not to block it because it is and the bishop you know 
Yeah, it's a bit sad. Feels a bit sad uh, with this pawn in front of him. So we take back with the bishop, and yeah, black is just a bit better. Uh, the pin is quite um, uh, quite problematic for white actually because they can't break it. You know, no bishop e2, and if the queen moves, then we we take obviously. For instance, queen d2 would be just losing because then we take and we destroy uh, white spawn structure. So okay, this would be uh, a lesser evil than to play bishop g5, uh, which which seems normal for white. I mean, if we look at the position, it's symmetrical except one uh, except one extra tempo for white which they have spent on castling, so how could they be worst? But we know why, because if they destroy our pawn structure, we don't care. Our king, our king will be safe on c8. Whereas if, if we destroy their pawn structure and we are going to, uh, the king will be very unsafe. So after bishop g5, we of course play knight to d4 and okay let's take a look at knight to d5 keeping the symmetrical game you might be thinking yeah i know uh, i remember you know i have a memory thank you yesha it's queen to d7 i remember we just saw it before for white but no i mean it's a good move it's playable but white has an, a very nice resource the main difference is that after bishop takes f6, we cannot take because then uh, this fork wins our queen. So we could try to take the knight on f3 instead, and at first it looks it looks winning because g takes uh, is met by queen to h3 just like before, and. This would be totally winning for, for black. But uh, white has a very nice resource here. It's bishop takes g7 with the idea that if we take the queen, they give the fork once more, once again. And yeah, this position is just crazy. We cannot play queen to g4 with like a force mate because once again, Knight to f6 fox our king and our queen and we can resign so here I think the best move is to castle but then okay it's crazy maybe even knight to f6 and yeah who knows so we will not play queen d7 in this position the best move according to the computer so yeah, the true best move is to play c6 and you can take a look at it uh, on your own because I want to show you not the best move but a very good move uh, knight to f3 and the reason why um, it's because I just can't resist to show you uh, this uh, very nice variation I remember um, seeing it uh, as a child like many years ago uh, I don't know 25 years ago more and I still remember it so bishop h3 and knight takes f6 white is trying to to be as symmetrical as possible but after g takes and bishop h4 uh, yeah we see the main difference so of course not bishop h6 because then just the check and it will be a very quick checkmate but bishop h4 and it looks as white is going to play bishop g3 on the next move with the bishop protecting uh, his king and yeah uh, black would be much better for after for instance walk to g8 check bishop g3 black is much better it, there is no doubt uh, probably winning and yeah we can win the exchange so you know it's just a winning position but it's very technical and 
maybe maybe you know white can draw in the end after uh, a long fight but instead here in this position we don't take the exchange i mean our bishop is better than this rook and instead of taking material we give material we give the world queen the idea is that if they don't take our queen and play a move like bishop g3 after f4 will not uh, win just an exchange but a world rook um a world bishop sorry and which is better than an, ex an exchange so white has to try to take the queen but rook j check forces mate in a few moves uh, king to h1, bishop g2, king to g1, so of course we don't take the draw, we play um, knight takes f3, not only winning the queen, but uh, forcing mate on the next move, because bishop g5 is the only legal move, and we just take the bishop, and it is checkmate, so very nice variation. Okay, so... As as we can see, uh, the pin after uh, the opponent has castled is very efficient. But we might be wondering, why, uh, what if, for instance, uh, white castle after all these moves? I'm, I'm showing you once once more for you to remember them. Castle, which as I said before, it's already dubious. It's not bad, according to the computer, but, you know, already one step in the wrong uh, direction. So bishop g4, and now we, uh, we have to uh, to understand what if white uh, tries to um, uh, unpin themselves with h3. So there is only uh, one clever move here it's bishop to h5 because we, we didn't uh, go there to take the um, the knight uh, while white is capable of taking back with the queen because then we we have, have achieved nothing so and there is no point in going back to e6 or d7 or in this direction because then you know we just gave white and next one move h3 which may be not that great for white but you know uh, we are uh, we have more ambitions than simply going back this way and we want to keep the pin and now white has to be very careful because knight d4 is still in the air and our clever idea of uh, playing queen d7 first before taking is still in the air too and the only difference could be that when we take and play queen to h3 uh, it's not queen to h3 but queen takes h3 so yeah white is in big danger so the moves uh, we want to uh, to take a look at is g4 a very um, very forcing move, very direct move, and here, okay, black has two good moves. First, they can play bishop g6, which is very simple, you know, uh, not sacrificing anything. Our bishop is attacked, we just move it, you know, simple chess. And how to evaluate the position? Actually, it depends. It depends on first. Are you a human or a computer? And then, if you are a human, are you a grandmaster or not? And I think the answers to both questions is one, a human, and be not a grandmaster. So, uh, why did I ask you that? It's because, according to computers, it's equal and according to grandmasters as well but i think the position is very hard to uh, to play 
for a while before a certain level, before this level. The reason is white has moved two pawns in front of the king, which is very, very weakening. While our king hasn't given its uh, address yet, so uh, now we have a very simple, direct, and dangerous, deadly plan to play a move like queen d7, not only uh, preparing long castle but uh, also adding this uh, weak pawns and then we will either sacrifice something like after queen d7 knight takes d4 maybe you know sometimes or maybe we will not sacrifice anything but simply play h5 and destroy uh, white's uh, pawn structure and if we could open just one file uh, against white's king we would be totally winning so you know we have a very simple and direct plan whereas uh, white's compensation uh, resides in the fact that this bishop and g6 is very passive actually it has no square at all but it doesn't really m matter if we give white um, checkmate, yes? So, according to the computer, it's equal because the computer will never get mated. But between humans, it's very, it's almost impossible to play for white. And actually, yeah, um, black scores 56% here online, so, you know. Uh, better for better for black uh, indeed in practical term but anyway it doesn't really matter because after g4 there is a move almost no one can resist to play and how could we it's uh, to sacrifice a knight on g4 because after h takes bishop takes for only one knight we have already uh, two pawns as a composition yeah, it's not enough, but you know, it could turn to be useful uh, someday. But even more importantly, we have recovered this spin, which is even deadlier than before because the pawn on g2 is missing. So not only the knight is pin, uh, but it lacks protection, and the threat knight to d4 would be just the end for for white. So they could try bishop b5. Uh, pinning the knight but it will be losing because then we simply castle white has to take otherwise knight to d4 and pawn takes uh, c6 and we will just continue with f5 uh, f5 opening the f file uh, for our work and yeah this this will simply uh, win the knight on f3 so, if not bishop b5, uh, what then? The best move is bishop e3. It is the most play move, uh, the most popular move, but most people don't know why. Uh, why the, this is the best move? They think, as you might be thinking uh, now, that the idea of behind bishop e3 is to take the knight after the knight to d4 it is not because if you take the knight then normally in this kind of positions uh, we take with the bishop and I told you before that I didn't want our bishop and c5 to be blocked uh, by your pawn but here it's better to take with the pawn why to win a tempo a very important tempo against the knight on c3 which cannot move to e2 obviously so the best move for white is to play this clever move uh, knight to b1 with the idea queen to f6 knight to d2 because if knight if the knight goes to d5 then c6 and it's very problematic yes like for instance knight f4 simply queen to f6 and we win the knight and the game but Knight to b1 looks clever for, for white, but we play queen to f6, 
why it has to, to play knight to d2 and it seems I, uh, as I have everything under control but we can simply castle because for the knight we, we as I told you before we have two pawns as a compensation and uh, here white has basically no move whatsoever there is absolutely nothing they can do the bishop is useless the knight cannot move nor can the queen I mean she can move to to e2 but uh, the, but that's all and the rook are pretty useless too so white has no id no active id but um we we do have some yeah we could can play h5 with the id maybe h4 but also uh, rook to h6 and then rook to g6 or maybe we can bring the other rook rook to e8 and rook to e5 um, because the knight uh, won't be able to take because it's it's still pinned so yeah this position is just uh, totally winning for for black so yeah bishop takes d4 is a losing mistake here the the best move and only move not to lose is almost never played so i mean i tell you but it's it's kind of a secret is to play bishop takes f7 with the id two beautiful ideas the first one is not that difficult that after uh, king takes white has knight takes uh, e5 de and the queen the queen can take the bishop and voila the material is equal uh, and both king are uh, pretty unsafe we can try for instance h5 maybe and yeah the queen goes there and maybe we can play king to g8 and yeah you know it's more or less equal it is equal according to the computer so this is the first idea but you might be wondering okay now that I saw that uh, if I take the bishop, white takes on e5, but I can simply play king to f8, yes? And it seems that um, that we are going to uh, to win a piece back, yes? Maybe the knight on f3, maybe the bishop on f7 one day, not, uh, not yet, but you know, it's still en prise. Uh, but here white has a very uh, very nice move knight takes g4 sacrificing the queen because if bishop takes d1 then knight is 6 with a deadly royal fork and after king takes uh, knight takes d8 uh, rook takes whichever uh, rook takes uh, white is a piece up and we would be lost so the best move according to the computer after uh, bishop takes f7 is to either take the bishop with an equal game as we just saw or to play first king e7 a strange move uh, because white has uh, this check and now uh, the computer takes with the only difference subtle difference first after h5 uh, white cannot move the queen to g3 because uh, there would be this uh, this fork now that the knight is missing uh, on c3 but after queen to h3 the uh, only difference uh, with the position that we just saw is that the knight is on d5 instead of c3 which should be good for white normally but here we can play c6 and the knight has to retreat so actually uh, black would be up a tempo so this is the best that uh, black can get but you know according to the computer as always as every position is it is just equal so yeah just so you know after g4 black has two very promising moves uh, if you like to sacrifice please do because it's so tempting but you should know if 
White suddenly play uh, plays all the best moves, and uh, they they will equalize in the end. And if you really don't like to sacrifice, and you know I will not blame you. It's not my style. Uh, you can play this uh, simple move, bishop to g6. You'll still have to attack though with queen d7, castle long, and h5 at some point, or maybe a, a later sacrifice. So okay, as we have seen, uh, the combination of uh, castling, early castling, and uh, the the pin is quite deadly, quite efficient. So what happens? If after e4, e5, knight f3, knight c6, bishop c4, bishop c5, d3, knight f6, knight c3, d6, white tries h3 with the intention of castling on the next move. Uh, here there is a move I love to play, uh, is h6, setting a deadly trap. It's very funny because we keep uh, playing symmetrically. But castling is already uh, a huge mistake for white. As after g5, uh, we march uh, forward and start the attack. And the problem for white is that they have played this move h3, which is weakening. White would be much better already if the pawn was still on h2, because, you know, black is playing h6 on g5. And two weakening moves, but here it is ju justified. Why? First, the center is quite closed. You know, the position uh, would be winning for white if, like the uh, the two pawns on the e file uh, were were missing. Then, you know, you don't want to move pawns on the king side uh, with an open center. But here it is closed, so it's good. And the other reason is that. We can use this pawn as an anchor for our attack, as after g4, uh, something will open, either the g file or this diagonal, and yeah, if the pawn was on h2, then after g4, white could just move the, move the knight, but here, uh, g4 will open five, five or fives, and yeah, there is basically nothing white can do. For instance, there is this defensive move, knight to h2, but then we can play g4, we don't care. After knight takes, we take with the bishop, because it is not developed, um, whereas our, our knight is. And after h takes uh, g4, we can play rook to g8. And unfortunately for white, they cannot protect the pawn with f3 because it is pinned. So on the next move, uh, we are going to play knight to g4 and then, sorry, then the queen comes and if needed, uh, we can castle long next to, um, not only to, to keep our king uh, safe, but also to bring the rook, uh, the ah rook. So yeah. Everyone will join the attack, and yeah, white is just lost here. So, if not knight to, to h2, then what? There is uh, a game I like, uh, because it's funny. It's a game between two of the uh, best players ever, uh, that at least two of the best players uh, that didn't um, become world champions. Uh, white is Samuel Wachowski, the American, and uh, black is Akiba Rubinstein uh, from Poland. And when I first saw this game, I was like, come on, Wachowski just played like a kid. And then I looked at the, the date on which it was played, 1917. And Wachowski was five years old, so actually was good at five, very good, uh, probably the best five five year old uh, ever. He was uh, playing. There's this famous picture of him 
playing 20 adults in Paris and winning most of the games. Uh, but yet, yeah, sometimes, just sometimes, uh, at 5 he played like a kid. And in this game he did. But okay, he understood that uh, after G4 he would be crushed. So he tried this uh, clever move actually, knight to d5, with the idea g4, knight to g5, sacrificing the knight. And actually, yeah, if we uh, carelessly take the knight, then after bishop g5, white would be even winning. So, you know, tricky little Sam. But of course, Webinstein was already one of the best players in the world. And he just took the so knight to g5, sorry. Then Akiba, the great Akiba, uh, took the knight on g5. And after ED, he took the knight on g5. So d6, bishop c6, h takes g4. And we can see that uh, little Wojciechowski managed to uh, get a position with equal material. So. Yeah, he was good at 5, but the problem is it's a dead loss position. Because d5 was played, queen to e2, you know, uh, clever Sam, dc4, queen takes, and white wins the rook. But of course, queen to f6, not only defending the pawn, but um, threatening queen to h6. And yeah, there is nothing white can do. Poor Sam played bishop b3, queen h6, queen takes e5 checked, bishop e6, and then only move not to get mated was queen takes h8, giving up the queen. And uh, Wasevsky took uh, his time to resign after that, but he did here. Okay, so uh, I have one final example for you just before that. If you like this video, and I really hope you do, please press the like button. And if you don't want to miss more content of mine, please subscribe. It will make me very happy. So the last example is a game that first happened between uh, two French players. Uh, Jean-François Joly, international master with uh, white, and Sébastien Mazé, uh, international grandmaster, and uh, the captain of the French team. So, I tell you, the position was, uh, had been reached before, but black was always playing castle, which is not the best move. And my question to you, is what is black uh, black's best move that um, Sebastian Mazé played in the game? If you have the answer, please write it in the comments below. That's all for today, and I see you very soon. I hope. Ciao.